At the heart of Boston's world-class collection of great neighborhoods, unparalleled talent pool, and dense network of transportation infrastructure is the city's rapidly emerging seaport district. Boston Seaport is a growing neighborhood created from scratch on a scale unlike anything else in the United States. And look at that, that dark image. It's a dumpster wow. moving down the street, floating down the street. Seaport residents and workers surprised by the flooding. Holy cow, where are we? How is this, is this really happening down the seaport? If you take a look at some flooding images from the seaport in Boston earlier on today, something you don't want to do. So about 25,000 years ago, um, we had these large ice sheets covering parts of the world. When you had that large ice sheet sitting on land, it actually pushed down the surface below it. Sort of like putting a bowling ball on a memory foam mattress. Sort of pushes that land down. Um, around that bowling ball, you have sort of mattress that comes up, that forms sort of a bulge around the bowling ball. When all that ice melted about 10,000 years ago, the earth is slowly going back to that sort of flat state. You know, that mattress is slowly sort of settling back in um, to where it was. Another component is heating of the oceans. So when you heat the oceans, your water actually expands, uh, which can cause sea level to rise. Um, so that combines with ocean currents and circulation um, to cause rising sea levels here in Boston. When you think about sort of small amounts, millimeters or inches per year, um, it seems really, um, really small and very sort of um, not important to people along the coast. Um, except if you think about just a little bit every single year, um, that adds when you have a storm, um, when you have really high tides. So while you don't see it every single day, when you have these larger events, um, the consequences are that much more severe. So that can range from strategies like increased harbor walk to new and protected and resilient parks like Martins Park that is newly built along the coast of the Ford Point Channel to longer term priorities including understanding how to protect Day Boulevard. So there's a overall resiliency checklist that everyone has to fill out as part of a large project review process with the city planning authority. So a lot of it unfortunately is just market driven and I think that puts more of a uh, burden of responsibility on us as builders and designers as designers and developers as they develop to think about how do we creatively attack this problem that we can still build new buildings and give people you know class a office space or the best residences that they could imagine but um, doing it in a way that doesn't compromise the buildings or the city's ability to withstand future climate shocks right Harbor on the boat and I know the sea level's been rising and it's been awful and there's not much people are doing about it. I think that up till now I had mostly focused on the individual action. Going 100% renewable with our electricity, trying to keep the heat down in the winter, line drying our clothes, cooking from scratch and trying to buy things, you know, food locally, eating less meat. But I think through learning about how little time we have left to make substantive change on a bigger level, I've realized that I can't just do it things in my own personal life. I have to sort of help get everyone on board with making bigger changes. The point of this action is to disrupt business as usual in Boston and to make this crisis unavoidable for people who can afford to ignore it. I think it's saying it very loud and clear. We don't have any time. We have zero time. And I've known it for a long time, but there hasn't been enough of a movement to be able to get the kind of momentum that we've needed. You want me with one? It's hard to not feel a little bit guilty for giving them this world and for not acting sooner. And my oldest is four and a half, so I think at that age she's learning most by observing and seeing what we do and I, that's why 
I think it's so important to not just talk about it, but to actually- The most important thing that you can do is to ask for change from the city. To let your city councilor, to let the mayor, to let the environment department and other staff at the city know that it is on your mind, that you want a safe place to live for years into the future. I mean, the city of Boston lies within the state of Massachusetts, which lies within the Northeast region, which lies within the United States. And everyone at all these different scales is going to have to ultimately work together. So it's a problem that um, we have to address. Um, and it's a problem that affects you, um, even if you don't believe in climate change. Um, whether, you, um, whether you believe that humans cause climate change or not, the oceans are rising. We observe it and it is continuing, um, so it's, it's something that we have to deal with.